Hello, and welcome to Clouder. This short tutorial is part of our Clouder Essentials series, a set of video resources for organizers. So the purpose of today is to show you uh, how to provide a little bit of technical support uh, to the attendees and session chairs and speakers at various different events. As part of this, we've set up a demonstration in the Student Lounge Conference. Most stuff will be happening during this training in the auditorium. The, the page will be a lot more full and contain a lot more information. So if we head to the auditorium, uh, you will probably see to start with something that looks a bit like this. At the moment, uh, the filler video is uh, playing out. These sessions are basically configured to have a pre-recorded talk followed by a live Q&A. This is our kind of video, pre-recorded video that's playing out. You have a, a pre-recorded video that authors will have uploaded and provided subtitles for, followed by a live Q&A. The pre-recorded videos play out automatically and the live Q&A start, start and end automatically as well. The key thing is getting people into the backstage area and making sure that their audio and video is connected properly. So when you go to the auditorium, uh, in the 20 minutes before an event starts, you will see uh, the speaker's areas open up. This is what we call the backstage uh, kind of experience. And by default, if there's only one available for speakers, then uh, it will uh, open up just that one. This is our video room experience. It shows how long there is until someone is off air with the countdown. And when the countdown hits zero, it says you are live, and then someone is actually live in stream. We've seen at some conferences, people find this a little disconcerting because it's automatic. They haven't got to click anything. So it's important to convey to both the session chair and the presenters that are in the backstage area that in the last 10 seconds before they go live, it will flash red, black, red, black, red, black, and then they will be live and it will stay red. And when they're live, they should just launch straight into it. Another thing that puts people off sometimes is the fact that live streaming over the internet and including the way Clouder does it has a between a five and 30 second lag for the audience. That means that when someone says something in the stream, says something in the backstage area, it takes between five and 30 seconds for the audience to see it and start responding in chat. This is okay if it's just kind of responding to questions and things being answered. Uh, it tends to look pretty awful if someone is sitting there saying, am I live, am I live, am I live for 30 seconds waiting for the audience to see it and respond. So it's really important that we convey to the session chairs and presenters in the backstage that when the system says they are live, they are in fact live and they should start talking and, and running their session. So in an ideal world, people come into the backstage area and they'll, they'll know where to be based on the room that their event is scheduled in and they should just be able to start their camera, start their microphone and hit join. Okay, that's nice and simple. That's the easy version of this. And you can now see it's flashing red, black, red, black at me and will tell me that uh, I'm about to go live and we'll just see that happen. So now it says I'm live and I have 10 minutes inside this event. However, things aren't always quite this simple. There are a few things that can go wrong, and these are the things we would like you to provide help with. So I'll leave the room. You can now see the speaker's area for the next event has showed up for me because it starts up at 1.30. So I've got sort of, when you land on the page for the first time, the browser won't have camera and microphone permissions. This is fairly normal. What we would like is for all authors to show up in advance and all the session chairs to show up in advance and use one of the social rooms, any of the social rooms, which use exactly the same video technology to get their camera and microphone permissions working. Unfortunately, not every author and not every session chair is necessarily going to prepare in advance. And that's usually when you will have to step in and provide assistance. The backstage areas are open 20 minutes in advance of their event. You will have 20 minutes to coordinate with the organizers to make sure everyone shows up any time that's left to get the camera and microphone working. So I'm in Firefox at the moment. If I click start camera, I get it asking me for permission to access uh, my camera. And it picks one by default. It picks a kind of the, the available default camera, which may not be the one that someone wants. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Now, it's useful if someone clicks remember decision because that's gonna make it more reliable in the future when they come back to use this. But if they, if they don't click that, it will keep asking them every time they try to switch on their camera. So we can click allow and that works. 
and then I can click start microphone and you see it's going to do the same thing again asking me for my microphone permission. Okay, if the default camera and uh, microphone weren't the one I wanted, I can click settings and then I can pick a different one. So for example, these two. Okay, you can now sort of see that there's a green screen behind me, but the microphone permission has failed. Um, in this case, that microphone permission has failed because my browser just doesn't understand uh, the existence of this microphone properly, uh, and it's going to keep failing. And the reason for that is because that microphone is currently in use by Zoom. This can happen if people have Zoom or MS Teams or Skype or other things open in the background, they will keep clicking that and they will keep getting permission denied. And it's not because the browser's denied permission, it's because the operating system has denied access to the device because it's in use by a different application. So I'm going to switch back to the one that does work and I can enable that. And then we can see that there's a little audio preview as well. That's the first step of things that can go wrong. If the device hasn't been allowed, if the device is in use by a different application, that's something to be aware of. If they deny permission, it can go wrong. So let's say I start this and then for some reason I'm, I've clicked block. At this point, every time you click start camera, it's going to keep saying permission denied. It doesn't matter how many times I click this, it's going to keep doing it. And there are instructions for both Chrome and Firefox down here. The way to clear this though, is to come up to the address bar and click on the settings button and then clear the camera permission. The same thing goes for the microphone. If I click start microphone and block it for whatever reason, then if I come up to the address bar, I can clear that block. And now I can allow both and it works. Okay. Very similar thing is true in Chrome. So I'm going to uh, pop into Chrome. And you can see here that this is Clouder and it's light theme. Okay, so I've now made it to the auditorium just by logging in. I landed on the home page and I clicked the auditorium room and I can see my backstage areas. I'll open the one that I want to access. And I happen to know that this will ask me to choose a camera within Clouder because it couldn't detect the right default. And there we go. I can click enable on that. And now I'm all ready. So the sim a similar thing can happen in Chrome. We click the lock button. And in this case, uh, Chrome kind of knows this uh, and wants it to be in ask mode is the kind of default. Uh, when you come onto the page and Chrome requires a reload uh, whenever you change these permissions. So now when I click start camera, obviously I should click allow, but if I were to click block, same thing would happen. Notification at the bottom of the page. Every time I now click start, it's going to fail. If I try to click settings, it's also going to fail for the same reason. It can't get the list of devices. So we come up, we click the lock icon, we change this to either ask or allow, preferably allow. Chrome will then force us to reload the page in order for that to be applied, which is a difference from Firefox. Firefox does not require you to reload the page. We can start the camera and we'll have the same thing with the microphone. Now, something I've not mentioned is the permissions for the camera and microphone could actually be different at the same time. So in this case, I have the camera working, but my microphone is denied. And this can be quite confusing to people. Again, this is just because the browser permissions are set incorrectly and we just click in the address bar to change them and reload the page. Excellent. So once someone's in, you'll see a grid of different uh, videos here. And Ross, maybe you could try joining me uh, in the background here. Yep, sure. One second. So while Ross comes and joins me, I'll, I'll uh, say a little bit about the ending of one of these sessions. Um, when the time runs out, Clouder will pretty much cut people off um, because it's moving on to the next video. So here we go. We can see Ross has now joined me. I'm the, in the last 30 seconds, they need to bring themselves to a close. They need to kind of stop talking and invite people to come and join them uh, later in one of the discussion rooms. Uh, there is going to be a set of spin-off asynchronous video chat rooms. They're exactly the same as our social rooms, except that they're associated with particular papers. 
And those spin-off rooms, the audience is going to be encouraged to go into them and continue the conversation uh, that was happening during that session with the authors that they're interested in chatting to. Follow on hour long conversations with authors and uh, attendees. So it's a great way for people to uh, continue the networking and continue sharing research. So we really encourage uh, presenters to go and join them. But one thing the presenters need to be aware of is they are automatically transported to those rooms, whereas the audience have to click through and then the audience also, uh, and ordinary attendees may be trying to enable their camera and microphone for the first time. So in that case, the presenters need to join the discussion room and hang around for a few minutes just to wait for other attendees to get set up and, and join them. You have to be using Chrome or Firefox on a desktop. If someone is using an Android device, an iOS device being an iPad or an iPhone, or is using Safari on a Mac, please tell them to switch to Chrome or Firefox. They will not have a correct experience if they are using Safari. Okay, other bits of the Cloud of Sight will, will work in Safari. It's just our backstage experience is not set up for Safari. Ross, would you mind sharing screen within Clouder? We can see I've got three seconds, two seconds, and now I'm gonna go into the next backstage area. So uh, you'll be able to see this and now you can see there's a screen share going on. Uh, it's a bit trippy because Ross is showing the same screen that uh, he's watching. But uh, yeah, we can see the previews at the bottom. Now, the thing is this area does not show exactly the same layout as the stream. It shows all the video feeds that are available. The key thing to point out to uh, session chairs and presenters is that they will see something fairly similar in the stream, which is their screen share and then their pictures below it. Okay. Um, so thank you for that, Ross. Uh, if Ross, are you ready to uh, switch over to showing the Mac uh, operating system permissions? Yes. Let me just show my screen here. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing in Zoom now, and Ross is going to demonstrate uh, some additional problems that can occur on Mac. Yes. So. Macs, of course, are more complicated. Um, and the main reason for this is, although participants will be using the same browsers, Firefox, Chrome, um, Windows doesn't have such strict rules about whether applications on your computer can use the camera or microphone, whereas Mac OS, at the operating system level, also has a set of permissions that the browsers themselves have to request. So not only does the website have to ask the browser for permission to access the camera or the microphone, the browser then also has to ask the operating system for permission to access the camera and the microphone. And hopefully most people on a Mac have used some kind of video calling application in their browser before, and so this will already be set up. But we do quite regularly come across a situation where that hasn't happened. So, hopefully, I have managed to reset those settings on my system. And so I'm in Chrome, um, and I'm going to hit Start Camera and Allow. And even though I allowed it, it has been denied. Sometimes you'll get a message pop up from macOS. Sometimes that doesn't happen, and I'm not entirely sure why. But when this happens, what you need to do is go into or tell your um, session chair or presenter to go into the macOS system settings or system preferences. Uh, choose security and privacy and go to the privacy tab. And there are two entries here for camera and microphone. And in order to edit the permissions, they'll need to click this little lock icon down here, put their password in or use touch ID. And then you can enable um, permissions to use the camera in Chrome and Firefox and you can do the same for the microphone in Chrome and Firefox and it tells you here Firefox will not have access to your microphone until you quit and restart so there's a button that lets you do that or you can just say I'm going to do that later and then you can manually quit Chrome and quit Firefox um, and now, hopefully, we'll be able to reopen them. So, yeah, this uh, can be very confusing to debug because your browser can be telling you 
you know, everything is perfectly fine. The user can't even see that something has gone wrong. And yet in the background, the operating system is just saying no, no, no. Um, so yeah, if you have a, a presenter on a Mac, do be aware of this. Okay. So uh, that kind of brings us to the end of the main training section here.